Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you're here, you're probably about to study for your finals, for your midterms, for a big exam. So let me give you guys my credentials. Why should you trust me to help you reach your academic goals? First things first, I previously graduated with a degree in biological sciences, minoring in psychology and chemistry. I've gotten an A in organic chemistry two, biochem one and two. I took analytical chemistry. I've taken physics. I've taken physiology. I I got an A in that class. I've taken both A and P one and two, gotten A's in those classes, gotten 100s on multiple of my exams, specifically in anatomy and physiology. Those classes just like they just click for me and I am currently in an accelerated bachelor's science of nursing program that will give me a bachelor's in nursing in one and a half years. So I have had to learn how to study because when I was in high school, I did not know how to study. No one teaches you how to study and then you're in college and it's like, what is going on, especially around finals time, especially if they're cumulative finals, which lucky me, all of my finals this semester are cumulative. Yeah. So I posted a post on YouTube and I asked you guys, what did you guys want to know on how to prep for your tests for your finals? Basically a final survival guide that I've used to get me through my classes and that I'm going to implement this semester. And yes, I am uploading this before it's even December. A lot of high schools in the US, they'll have their finals week the end of December and I am uploading this in November. And that's because in order to retain information the best, it is so important to not cram. And I know, I know it's so easy to push it off and try to smush all the information in your head and maybe you get an A, but you're not going to remember a single thing. And for nursing school, you have to remember what's going on because that information could literally save someone's life. So let's talk about step number one. Don't cram and start prepping far in advance. For nursing school right now, I will start prepping for heart exams one to two weeks beforehand, specifically physiology and pharmacology because this is my first semester. So we're starting more with like the basic nursing classes. To do this for cumulative finals, go back through your worksheets, through your notes. Maybe your teacher is going to give you some type of study guide or rubric to kind of go off of. Those are always so, so helpful because then you don't really have to start from ground zero. You have a foundation on what to focus on and what to study. If you're like me and you don't get a rubric, you don't get any advice on what you should focus on. You're going to want to go in, go through your old material. What do you know right away? The stuff you know right away, that's amazing, but you don't need to really hammer in on that. I know it probably makes you feel good because it's like, oh, I'm getting this right. I know this, but you want to really focus on the topics that you're struggling on. Maybe you got it wrong on past exams. If you're in college, you can go in and meet with your professors and usually they'll let you look at your past exams and kind of see what did you miss? You can ask them, what is the correct answer? How do I get to this? What steps did I miss? All of those things. Another super important part to studying to succeed for your exams and for life is to break up your study sessions. Don't try to cram again. We don't like cramming over here here, cramming is not going to do anything good for you in the long run. I got one question and it was like, I always cram. Can you tell me how do I cram to get the most information into my brain the night before an exam? And I hate to break it to you, but cramming is the worst thing that you can do for preparing for an exam, specifically cumulative finals and midterms. I guess my only thing to maybe elongate your longevity for studying would be do the Pomodoro method. This is one of my favorite study techniques. I personally do 25 minutes of studying, five minutes of break, repeat the cycle until I guess your brain is melting out your ears. That's super beneficial. I usually do that. And then maybe when it hits one hour or two hours, I'll take a longer break. Maybe I go eat. I will go watch a show, like do something like that. Do something that's actually a break for your brain. I always call them brain breaks because truly your brain needs some other type of stimulation rather than trying to just shove information, information, practice problems. Like your brain gets fatigued eating things is super beneficial because your brain runs off of glucose. So whenever you are eating a little snack, glucose is what your brain works on. That is just going to help your brain work, be more productive and things like that. While we are speaking on the topic of consuming things, I know a lot of people will drink caffeine maybe the night before so you can stay up super late, study as long as you can, shove as much information into the files in your brain. However, say you get the information in there kind of, if you can't go to sleep, that is when your memory is really solidified when you go to sleep. Maybe you try to pull an all-nighter. Your memory 
is going to be garbage because you have to go to sleep and then there's like these little like cleaners in your brain getting rid of the gunk so you can think clearly helping you sleep properly so you just feel better the next day so sleep is so important when it comes to finals week and i know you don't want to hear that because you're stressed you want to study as much as possible and you don't want to waste time sleeping when you have a bajillion things that you need to study memorize learn and things like that unfortunately sleep is detrimental to longevity and doing well on exams. For myself personally, I'll cut myself off at 8 or 9 p.m. the night before an exam so that way I can shower, go to sleep before 10 or around 10. That way I'll still try to get around that eight hours of sleep that I know is so important for me to feel good and function properly. And just taking care of your body in general is really important around finals week. So I will always drink water. I really like this new cup I got. I will just sit and I have the straw in front of me and I just will take drinks and it's just ready. I don't even have to move my hands. It's just ready for me. Whenever I need something to drink, I can just get some hydration. And I also try to exercise. I've honestly been slacking on my exercise the past week because I thought I was getting sick, but I know when finals comes around, it is so important to do something to release the stress physically. Run, do push-ups, literally just stand up out of your chair and just like do jumping jacks or do squats. Like I will literally, some days I just get up and I, like it may seem a little silly, especially if you study at like a cafe or the library, you might get a few looks, but it's like you're keeping your body healthy and fit and you're physically moving the blood. Whenever you exercise, the blood is going to pulsate through your body and get up to your head. And then we're getting fresh oxygenated blood to our brain and your brain, what does it love? Oxygen, glucose. You're just gonna be a lot more productive whenever your brain has the fuel and the tools that it needs. So that way you can study properly. Okay, so that was the starter pack, the baseline where you need to start before getting ready for your finals. Now I'm gonna answer a few of your guys' specific questions. How do you study for multiple midterms effectively at the same time? Any tips, tricks for STEM major girlies on a pre health track. Okay, first we're going to start off on how to study effectively for multiple exams at the same time. So what I will do, take my iPad, write out a little checklist. I'm going to put a box with a time period for each of the classes. Maybe I'll do 20 minutes. Write out, I'm going to do 20 minutes of pharmacology flashcards. Then I'll take my little break, check it off. And then I'm going to do 30 minutes of studying for pathophysiology. So like I'll just go like that and that helps me kind of break up my time. Rather than spending three hours on one class, Maybe you feel okay with that class, but now you're kind of overwhelmed. That was a lot of material. You don't know how much you remember. And now you have three other classes to study for and you're exhausted. So I know personally breaking it up in those little time chunks, I'm not covering as much material overall for each specific class, but I am covering a little. So I'm like, okay, I'm progressing in each of the categories that I want to work on. And that just makes me feel so much better. It makes me feel like I am progressing for all my classes at the same time. How do you take notes? Do you paraphrase or do you write them down word for word? And how do you format your notes specifically? I'll either print off the PowerPoints that my teacher is going to use. I will write directly on them or I will pull them up on my iPad and write on there. When I'm doing this, I'm just filling in extra information that the teacher says that isn't on the PowerPoint slide specifically. That's how I primarily will take my notes. And then I can go back in later and I'll write on them again, or I'll go in just a notebook and write out all the topics that I want to focus on and try to just write as much information that I know about the topic and I'll try to just like write it without looking at my actual notes and then fill in the gaps. What do you still need to study? And that will kind of help you determine what do you know and what do you need to focus on. I also like to just highlight important words and I'll also highlight things according to different colors. So for pharmacology, for pharmacology, I will highlight the drug class in yellow. And then for all of my different prototype drugs, Drugs. Maybe I'll put them in green, side effects, something other color. I like to try to associate colors with the type of drug. So example, vancomycin causes red man syndrome. I'm going to make sure that there's a lot of red on this flashcard or on the notes. And then similar, rifampin that causes orange bodily secretions. So I'm going to put a lot of orange on it. So then I'll think back 
okay, I wrote rifampin in orange. Oh yeah, it causes orange secretions. So those little color connections, just anything that you can do to help your brain connect the two, that rhymed. I also like to draw little pictures for my notes. Specifically for pharmacology, I will put my notes as flashcards because pharmacology is a memorization based class. Flashcards and websites like Quizlet and there's a lot of other little flashcard making websites that you can use. Those are so, so helpful. I specifically made a lot of actual flashcards. These are just a few for my pharmacology class. And if we use the example of rifampin that I previously talked about, I made it orange because like I said, that little color word, you're gonna remember both. And here's my little drawing, my little man he's sweating orange secretions. So that's gonna help me tie the two together. So this is one of my fun little drawings. This one, this is for Mona B. So acute myocardial infarctions. So your heart attack drugs, things you're gonna use to prevent it, things you're gonna use whenever it's happening, fun little drawings and things that are kind of like out of the ordinary are gonna help you remember things a lot better than just like going through something that's pretty, not colorful and bland. I will use things like that and that is super, super helpful. How many hours do you study every single day? So it really depends on the day. It depends, do I have an exam upcoming that week? Like I said, I will try to study at least one to two weeks in advance for really big exams. Depends on the class, depends on how well versed am I with the material. I feel like anything like that is gonna be situational and you can't really proctor how much should you study based off of another person, but I'll try to study maybe like two to three hours chunks with my little breaks in between. What is your motivation to study hard consistently? I actually don't have the motivation all the time to stay super consistent with studying. I was actually struggling with consistency recently. It's getting to that point in the semester where it's getting colder out. You don't really feel like studying. You've been working hard and grinding all semester long. You don't really want to go study more. Like you're getting tired. You're getting a little drained. I kind of just make it not an option to myself to not get things done. How do you apply the topics you study to the actual test? The way that I apply what I'm learning and studying in class to my actual exam, on the exam, I will read the question and I cover up all of the options. And then while I'm reading, I'm thinking, okay, this is what I think the answer is. And I will remove it. And if that answer is one of the options, I'm going to select that. So that's how I kind of apply what I've learned to the exam rather than read the question super quickly. You look at the answers and you choose one that kind of looks familiar. Sometimes when you do that, if you don't understand kind of like the process behind the words, it's going to be really hard to apply that to scenario questions. That was really hard for me in physiology. That was a really tough course because it's all processes. It's all how do things work? Why do they work this way? What's the consequence? What do you need before? That's when I really like to do kind of like a mind map, write things down, arrows, diagrams, images, help a ton with actual application. How do you get rid of brain fog? So for brain fog, I find exercise really helps me clear the clouds away and taking a break. Maybe you really wanna just get this done, but if your brain's not taking in the information, you're honestly just wasting your time. And it would be better, go work out, go for a walk, listen to music, listen to a podcast. You're gonna feel better and then you can come back and you can focus. How do you specifically revise in the exact process your study routine follows? Let's start from the very beginning. I'll print off the PowerPoint before I go to class. I get to class, I am writing on the PowerPoint the extra information that the teacher tells me but it's not printed on the PowerPoint. Now it's been a few days and I will read through again kind of review what they say but not a harsh study session. I just read it re-familiarize myself with the terms. Now it's about a week or two before the exam. Now I'm going to thoroughly go through and one of my favorite processes is just talking out loud to myself, explaining the terms to myself. That really helps or meet with a friend, explain it to one another. Teaching is really beneficial for helping yourself understand concepts because if you can teach someone it, then you will really understand it. Talking out loud, super beneficial. I've also started whiteboarding, which is also nice. I, I really don't just fully rewrite my notes. I know some people do that. I don't really do that. It's not really beneficial. It's almost like a waste of time for me personally. What do you use for study? Quizlet. There's also an app called Circle In that my whole class, they just upload information, maybe links to videos, things like that. I'll use those, but primarily flashcards. 
and just my notes. This question is so, so good. Tips for mental health during school is how to still prepare, trying your best, even when you're afraid you might get a bad grade. Or just any tips on overcoming self-doubt and scared of not being perfect. I struggled with this and I still struggle with this. Striving for that academic validation of getting a perfect 100%, it feels so good. It makes you feel like you are so smart, like everything that you've worked for is worth something. But the truth is, is your mental health worth a letter on a piece of paper? If it's really affecting you to the point where maybe you're not sleeping, you're not eating because you feel like you have to study or you're worried if you don't get all A's on your report card. I am here to tell you that the world is not going to end if you get a B, if you get a C, if you get a D, even if you get an F. If you have to fully retake a course, the world is not going to end. That class is always going to be there to retake. Yes, maybe it will set you back a little bit from your initial path, your initial plan. Maybe it's not going to be exactly what you were hoping for. You can take that class again. I was struggling when I took physics one and two. It's just not my strong suit. I think I got B's in both of those. And a B is not bad by any means. Whenever you are striving for perfect academic marks, it can seem like the end of the world when it truly isn't. So I just want you to know that you don't have to get perfect grades in order to feel worth something, in order to feel validated. Honestly, just doing your best and studying as much as you can to the best of your ability, that should be worth enough. That should be validating enough. I really appreciate you guys sending in all of these questions. I hope I answered most of them. If you have anything else that you want to know, comment down below and I will try to reach out or I can do another question and answer segment in an upcoming video. I hope that this was a beneficial video for you guys and I hope you feel better prepared for your finals. I like these little chit chatty videos every once in a while. It's not as heavily edited and we kind of get to just chat. Let me know if you like videos where it's super edited and aesthetic or if you like videos where I'm kind of talking more because I love talking to you guys. Um, so yeah, let me know what your preference is. And I wish you guys luck on any exams, any finals, anything like that that's upcoming. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye guys. Good luck on your exams. Don't cram. Don't cram. Don't cram. Okay, I'm gonna hold you to that. Bye guys.